Howdy. This is microphone. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm Ray. We. Are, I'm Glenn. Howdy. I'm enjoying having Glenn Sabell here from uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Old Music of the USA tonight. And uh, Glenn's going to do a couple of songs uh, uh, here for us tonight. And uh, I thought I'd just turn them loose. And uh, here it is. Uh, today is what? Uh, September 2nd, 1988, right? Yeah, in, in 13 days, I'll be 27 years old. All right. <laughs> That's me. That's you. Oh, All right. Yeah. You might you might do us some stuff that uh, you've done recently, and you know, and just whatever. okay, whatever okay, do. I'll do something. Hang on. This will make a little funny noise here, but I get it in there a little. Here we go. This is a song I wrote called Somebody Like You. In the evening, when the sun gets I get the feeling like that I've never known Cause I need somebody I need somebody like you And when I'm lonely it Seems like every night I start to burn Girl, my instincts are right Cause I need somebody Need somebody like you Somebody like you Because the night grows cold I need to be told I love you And it's true There's not one thing in this world That I wouldn't do For somebody like you I can sure understand cause I need somebody Need somebody like you Maybe someday When my days are through They'll talk about us And how I spent them with you Cause I need somebody I need somebody like you like you because when I grows cold and I might need to be told I love you and it's true there's not one thing in this world that I wouldn't do oh that I wouldn't do that I wouldn't do for somebody like you Okay, I can tell you got a little red light on this one. The song called Let Yourself Love Again. Ruba, making funny noise. <laughs> Thinking you're the only one who's ever had a broken heart. She's gone and you're alone again. Yeah, your whole world's torn. 
on the pot. I know it all came crashing down, but buddy better listen to me. There's a lot more fun where that come from. A million other fish in the sea, yeah. So do me, open your eyes, you'll be surprised. Try another awful size and let just have a love again. Love again. A broken heart takes forever to mend. Just love again. Love again. And I believe your troubles will end. That it was all in your head That it had no remedy Injections and potions Won't help your emotions Only one thing can set you free It comes in every shape and size All you gotta do is to choose There ain't no place to go But down up when you're down So buddy, what you got to do Take it from a man who's seen it all Catch yourself before you fall. Let yourself love again, love again. A broken heart takes forever to mend. Just love again, love again. And I believe, my friend, your troubles will end. I believe, my friend, your troubles will end. Glenn Mayo did. Hi, Sue. I keep having it. Yeah. Goodbye. Here we go. Hi there. How you doing? Well, it's Friday night. About 10 minutes after 10. Here we are in Houston, Texas. Uh, Sabelle and I just flew down from Nashville last night and uh, brought Will with us. He was perfect on the plane, by the way. Oh, I was going to ask you about the flight. It was fine. You know, he didn't seem to have any problems with his ears or anything like we thought he was going to have a lot of trouble with his ears, but not a bit. He had a non-stop flight. Didn't he? Yeah, we came from from uh, Metro Airport in Nashville all the way down and uh, without a stop at all, and he was he didn't have a, we were really sweating it, you know, especially in the light of all the air stuff that's been going on lately. Like, yeah. You know, it kind of makes you think about it. Yeah, but really that doesn't, that doesn't, you know, I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's like what might happen to you. That's just yeah. part of the percentage. Yeah. But you really think about that percentage a lot when you're getting ready to go yeah. up and you got your whole family in there. Sure you do. Sure you but do. Uh, it was a real, uh, Real pleasant. He he got fussy a couple times, but he didn't seem to be in pain anymore, like his ears were hurting. Him. But uh, that was that was good. Uh, we spent all day. He didn't, when we got to uh, Houston last night, Mom and Gary picked us up, and uh, then uh, Marilyn and Alex, Sabelle's parents, showed up over there after we got in, and uh, we. He was real excited about everything. Will that is, and he. Uh, he didn't go to sleep for a while. He didn't go to bed until about midnight last night. And so we all woke up real early when this morning to get an early start on all the stuff we were going to do. And he, uh, you know, we were all worn out and tired. We had a long day today. But it was it was fun. But, you know, anytime you got a bunch of people in the van driving all over Houston, it's going to be kind of tiring. Oh, know? yeah. Get worn out. But we're kind of just, we went over to eat at Chafalaya's over on the North Freeway. And, oh, you did, huh? Did you get the crawfish pie? I sure did. <laughs> it was really good. Had a crawfish pie and a couple of drinks, and everybody kind of mellowed out. And we come over to Dad and Sue's kind of chilling out. You see me? <laughs> Not doing a little bit of picking and talking. Yeah, making making mistakes. I tell you, when they're in my pocket like that, it yeah. kind of got me a little distracted. I kept, my kept trying not to make it hit the guitar, but go. <laughs> Well, Paul has a clip on mic that's uh, wireless. Ah. Clip it on and put the little thing on here. Then you can walk around and to anybody. That's, that's, that's great. About a hundred bucks. That's not that nice, really. No, no. No. 
I thought about bringing. I'm. A, I'm a probably. I'm gonna go. We're gonna go see the Justice Band tomorrow night. But I'm probably gonna sit in. I'm sure somebody will ask me. You know. And uh, I'm wishing I brought my wireless because I can't hardly stand to be tied to something on the cord anymore. I mean, once you get spoiled on having a wireless, you know, guitar cord, you can't. Yeah, you can't go back. You know, like Eddie Murphy says in 48 Hours, once you had a man with no legs, you will never go back. Yeah, it's like it's the same thing. like I was when I used to play uh, rhythm guitar and just sit around with acoustic by myself, you know, and I thought that was fun to sing and all. Then I got a band and uh, started adding pieces and we uh, ended up with about five pieces and had drums and steel and all the amplifiers and all that. And then uh, ever since then, people say, oh, are you still playing? Well, I just don't, it's not there anymore, you know. Yeah. I just, uh, I it gets spoiled on stuff. I don't get the, I don't get the kick out of that dude. It is. It is definitely. Once you get used to a certain kind of mode of work and doing things, it's hard to go back to what you did before. I know you're missing. There's something missing. You know? I mean, like I've got a new mixer for the four track. I run the four track through. I've got a Ross six channel mixer that I run everything through when I record it, like on this tape here. Run the mail demos. I got eleven songs on here, and. uh Recently, like early this week, Monday, I went through and redid the vocals on every song because now with my mixer, it sounds so much better. And uh, I could never, it got me nuts to try to go back to going direct and the board and the microphone and using the echo to get a little ambience on the mic. Now I got an EQ and I run it through two different EQs, one on the Ross and one on the, another separate EQ that I patch into it and run it into it that way. And, you know, I, it sounds so much better. I can never go back to have it just plug in kind of thing. It's just all... What have you and Sabelle done on the Nashville scene since you've been up there? You, you, you've seen the sites? Have you uh, been uh, been around and uh, been well, in the different places? Well, no, you know, it's funny. It's funny, but uh, on most of the people that I've talked to up there that have anything to do with music or anything like that, I haven't done it, you know, they've been there for five years pursuing music and they haven't done any of the quote unquote touristy things, you know, all the things that, you know, you would do if you went to Nashville. How long have you been there? Huh? We've been there four months. Oh, okay. But uh, I've run into people who've been there a long time and said they've never done any of that stuff. But uh, we, what have we done? Mostly what I've done as far as going around and seeing these sites is just aside from Sunday Drive kind of situations like, oh, well, there's, you know, Grand Ole Opry, and there's this, that, you know, there's Ravon Auditorium, honey. That's it, Grand Ole Opry. But uh, we, uh, I, I tend to go to the songwriters' clubs and things like that. There's two main ones in town. One uh, one is over on, uh, off of uh, Wedgwood Drive. It's called Douglas Corner. And uh, they have a lot of songwriters nights over there where, where you know, songwriters will get up. And some of them are pretty successful. I've seen uh oh i saw the guy who wrote he's who wrote he's back and i'm blue have you heard that song yeah also i saw the guy who wrote 18 wheels and a dozen roses beautiful song. yeah good song he also wrote uh that song uh i have you when he goes uh sailors have the seven seas and four strong winds of blow and believers have what they have never seen you have eyes that shine uh, it was a hit I was several months ago for somebody, I don't know. I heard uh, It's a pretty good song at him. And uh, there's another place called, uh, and also I met Dana Cooper there, ran into him there, and we've been become pretty good friends. And I've done some charity work on his demos. Well, Dana came back uh, yeah, back he here. Travels he travels all the time. He came back here and, and played with uh, Shake, Shake Russell. Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 every other weekend, or, you know, four days out of any given week, he'll be out of town going around playing with Shake or doing solo stuff all over. He, he pretty much covers the whole part of the country from Texas on into Kansas kind of area. That's basically his turf that he covers. He, he makes a living, you know, he doesn't have any kind of day job or anything. But he, he books enough and travels around enough that he makes a living at what he does, which is good. But I ran him there, and there's another place over over off Hillsboro called the Bluebird Cafe, and a lot of famous people play there. In fact, last night while we were on the plane, Rosie Flores was playing there, and she's she's a new singer on uh, Warner Brothers reprise, uh, produced by the same guy that produces Rocky Mountain. And uh, he uh, 
let's say Skip Ewing is another guy I've seen fight out there, Michael Murphy. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the name people I've seen um, fight out there. Uh, Marshall Chapman, uh, Steve Earl, uh, people that you know the names you recognize. That's that's kind of a more of a showcasey kind of play. But they have songwriters nights too there, and I like to go and hear people and you know kind of sidle in and talk to people and just see what the climate is. You never know. I kind of worry about. They have a lot of times. Most of the songwriters, you, know, you can go out and play a song if you want to. If you're a songwriter, you can do something, you know, of yours. But I'm, I'm wary of doing that, you know, because you can copyright your song, but you can't copyright a hook. Yeah. And there, there are people in Nashville just professional hook stealers. Yeah. And they're going to listen and they'll go, oh, that's a good hook. They're yeah. a good hook. And they'll change it up. And they'll change it up to where all that's left of your idea was the hook. And then you try to sell the song and they sell it. Later on, you try to sell a song, your song, which is the original song, yeah. and, and say, no, no, somebody just did that. You know, it's kind of a, I'm wary about doing that, because I have some songs, while I don't think they have incredible, strong hooks that have good verbal hooks or, or have a catch to them to a certain extent, and I would hate to have somebody just plagiarize my stuff, plagiarize my ideas. I don't know. And, and at the same time, I, I don't know if doing that particular kind of thing gets you a lot of places. I know... What I think really gets you a lot of places is putting in the work to where you'll have a good, strong demo and having somebody who can, who can shop it around for you. you know, whether you're looking for a songwriting contract or a recording contract or whatever, you know, uh, you can play around on three corners your whole life and never do anything, you know. Uh, a good example of Randy Travis, who never did anything at all until Liv Hatcher took him up to Nashville and, you know, started selling him, you know, real hard with these people and finally got somebody with influence out to hear him and that's how he got his tones right. But, uh, you know, you can work your butt off for years and years and if you don't have any kind of, any people who stand behind you doing the kind of work on it, and you, chances are good that you never get hurt. So, I mean, usually when I go to songwriters nights and see songwriters do their songs in public just so they could get some Exposure usually only people in the audience are other song, right? Well, why don't you uh, okay. do Okay. Do you have any ballad type songs that you you could do? Okay, this is a song I wrote uh, last month. It's called Talking to My Heart. I don't think I played this for you, have I? No. Maybe not. It's on this tape here. So, friends and neighbors. Huh. Here you are again. Just when my world was turning back over, should I let you in? Well, it's all the same. To me, you say you know how you hurt me, telling me that you know how I feel. No, you'll never desert me, cause this time your love is real. What makes you think that I still need you? What makes you think I fell so hard? How could you know that I still care? You must have been talking to my heart. Has it told you how the hours go creeping? Did it tell you how the tears are falling? Did it let you know I could never let go? Did it tell you how we never stop calling? Baby, what makes you think that I still need you? What makes you think I feel so hard? How could you know that I still care? 
She must have been talking to my heart. I tried forgetting your face. I thought that I could erase every memory. It's a losing race when you're betting against your heart. I'll muster up a smile and show the world that I'm doing just fine. And maybe in a little while I can leave the past behind. What makes you think that I still need you? What makes you think I fell so hard? How could you know that I still care? You must have been talking to my heart. You must have been talking to my heart. Right. Good job. Good job. I like that song. Thank you. Of course, you know I'm a stickler for ballads. I know you're a ballad man. Yeah, I love ballads. Let's see. I... That far I go, have you loved me sweet and slow? Well, I don't know. A long, long way. How long would I wait? To hear you knocking at my gate, I can't say, but I'm listening every day. And just how many miles would I run to see you smile? Well, how far is the moon from the sun? And Lord, how do I know that my love just won't let go? One look at you and it's plain to anyone. But you're gone, 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 gone. No matter what I do, you won't come home. I might wait a million years, and my love may still be strong. But you're gone, 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 gone. That's the verse and the chorus on all the songs. Okay. Uh, there was a song you used to do that. There's a song you used to do that I liked. And you didn't write it, uh, I don't believe. Uh, what, what song was that? Uh, gosh, what was that I used to used to like for you to do? Uh, I couldn't love you anymore, no Yeah. Okay. Are you sure that's the one you're thinking of? That's the one. Could uh, could you love? Uh, Hang this around your neck. I, I, can do, I can do a little bit of that. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, but it does something like hear my heartbeat on that. I could give you the moon upon a silver tray. For anything you want me to do. There's one task that you must know that. Cause I couldn't love you any more than I do It's been a long time With a night class of two I'd master jujitsu Or elementary digital elite But one subject I would have to read you I couldn't love you any more than I do. I can't remember any more of it, Dad. I'm sorry. Damn. Lately, I feel like you all kinds of things. Uh oh. This is gonna fall. This is a real professional show we got here, folks. <laughs> Everything's gonna fall tonight. Just trying to make a lot of noise. Bye. 
Uh, I can't remember the rest of the words of that song, Pop. What? Okay, anyway. Labor Day, 1988, September the 5th. Glenn and Sabelle and Will have been here to visit us, and uh, now they're uh, getting ready to leave to go back over for a barbecue at uh, Glenn's mother's, and thought I'd shoot a little video of me, huh? As they're leaving. Here comes a kid. Howdy. How you doing? Fair to Midland, how you doing? Uh oh, oh there comes kids. a big boy. Let's go. Oh. You gonna put that thing down? Give us a hug or what? Or what? You're gonna or what? Bye, fellas. Bye, guys. When you see this, it'll be so cold that we'll all be afraid to open gifts. That's true. 